Good day, everyone. Feels like it's been a minute since we did one of these videos because it has been. And I'm here today to give you an update from Nicole. You all watched what happened in Hildervat. If you didn't, we'll show it here in a moment. Uh, but she was unfortunately injured and we got on the line to talk about it. We're going to play the entire interview in a podcast coming up. But here is a brief portion of it. Before I get to that, I want to just thank you personally, all of you that tuned in and watched. We had a great turnout on all the YouTubes. If you haven't seen it, you can still go back and do that. Also, the amount of you who uh, gave superstars or super stickers on the YouTube uh, to thank us for the broadcast, uh, we thank you so much for that. And Sophia, merch manager, is right now working on mailing all of you stickers. At first, I had said... At some point, a certain amount of you will get it. You know what? We're sending it to everybody that donated uh, over the course of the weekend. So, without any further ado, let's get to the video. Away we go. You know, if people are following you, uh, they probably have have had an update. Uh, but let's let's let folks um, let's talk about what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's just start with the moment you uh, you completed that rig. Yeah. Uh, so I completed the rig and hit the bell, started to drop down, kind of realized that I was pretty close to the truss. Um, and in, I don't know, if, in, in one video I saw, you can tell that like I, I kind of grabbed the truss a little bit as I was dropping down. Um, but other than that, it was like a very, a very normal dismount for me. I didn't think anything of it. Um, but I just landed in kind of a goofy way and immediately felt and heard a pop in my knee and then fell over right away. <laughs> um, tried to take some steps after that and was just like really not able to weight that leg, uh, dropped down one more time. And then you can see like Ryan Woods ran over, um, Mike, the PT that was there came over and some other staff. Uh, they did like some little tests on my knee and, and I, but I knew, like I knew that I was not going to be able to finish walking. <laughs> I, I thought for a second, like, oh, maybe I could like crawl in. Um, but I knew there's something like majorly, majorly wrong. And so I, like quickly I processed this and was like, no, that's, that's not smart. The, the chance of hurting this more is, is too great. That outweighs the, you know, whatever I get from finishing. So, um, so then I was like, yep, carry me off. And they carried me off and um, put me in a gator, brought me to the, the end of the race. Um, and Becca didn't even realize that I had gone down. And so she finished the race and somebody was like, oh, you won. And she was like, no, I don't believe you. <laughs> and then, so she, like, she ran back to me and then Lindsay came up crying, like actually like, like she was like, had tears coming down her face. And I was like, I haven't even cried yet. Like, <laughs> um, so both of them were, were obviously like very concerned. Alex came up, um, as well after the race, um, just like total surprise. Like I didn't expect it. I had no problems with my left knee going into it. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of one of those really freak accident things that, you never hope happens. <laughs> there's so there's nothing you could have done different. It's just how you landed. Yeah, I think that I think I just landed in a in a weird way. Um, you know, the obviously the ground was uneven. It was on sand. Uh, did that contribute? Possibly. Um, is there something that could have actually been wrong with my knee? To you know, going into the race, it's possible. Um, when after getting the MRI back. My knee looks great in terms of um, having like really healthy cartilage, really healthy meniscus. Um, I only tore my ACL, which I could have torn more things. <laughs> so um, my PCL, my LCL, my MCL are all intact. I did strain my MCL, but it's completely intact. So um, yeah, I, I definitely had... Um, I have some other things like wrong with my, that, with that <laughs> leg. <laughs> um, I broke my, my tibia and my fibula when I was, oh, probably 13, 12, something like that. 
Um, and so that leg is shorter because of that. Um, my Achilles also has been always like chronically tighter because of that injury as well, because of that leg length discrepancy. And I also have a labral tear in both hips, um, that are really asymptomatic, but you know, I, I'm a, an athlete of 33 and have been doing this a while. So I have, I have things going on. <laughs> well, when we talked at the Brito barn, that was the first thing I said to you. I said, you know, you seem to be taking it well and you're, you know, you can tell when someone's like, I'm fine. And you weren't like, it, it wasn't fake. It was very real. It was like, I'm going to see what's wrong and we're going to do the next thing. And, you know, like pretty stoic. And you said, Matt, I've, I've been an athlete my whole life. I'm pretty used to dealing with injury and coming back from injury. Yeah. And I, I've never dealt with something exactly like this before. I've never had, um, I've never had a major surgery in my adult life, but from a pretty young age of 12, I had a, a bad injury where I did need surgery. And um, I was told by my surgeon that uh, it was supposed to be kind of like a, <laughs> supposed to be an encouraging thing and a, and a kind of a joke. But he said, he said, you're going to be totally fine. You're never going to be a professional runner, but you're going to be totally fine. <laughs> And at the time, you didn't want to be a professional runner, though, did you? You were like a horse person. No, I was like into soccer. I was right. Like, or you know, did I, I, wait a minute, was horses a thing, or did I make that up? That's Becca. Oh, I think yeah. <laughs> Whatever. You all look the same to me. No, I couldn't remember who was a horse person. Sorry. Yeah, um, that's okay. <laughs> but no, I knew it wasn't running. I knew you weren't trying to be a runner back then. No, I I was I played soccer. Um, I played all the sports at that time, but I I think I I at that point I knew I was a talented runner, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to kick a ball. <laughs> right. Who wants to run? How boring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so were you, were, were you a big Mia Hamm fan? Oh, loved her. Yeah. That whole team loved. Yeah. That was, they, they really were that, 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 like that world championship team was like a huge inspiration to, to myself and like tons of other girls, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, have you met Mia Hamm? Um, no, I've never met her. Okay. Well, maybe yeah. maybe if you keep winning and you'll be like OCR becomes a thing and like the Olympics, you'll have to meet her. I don't know. I'm just yeah. throwing it out there. That'd be cool. <laughs> um, so, so with this one, um, when they tell you, you know, it's going to be six months, nine months, whatever, it, it doesn't like bum you out. It's just like, okay, this is what we're going to do next. Uh, I think the timeline is the the hardest thing for me. Yeah, that's a, uh, you know, so so I guess for first when you get injured, the first, um, like anxiety provoking thing is like not knowing what it is, right? Right. And so, thankfully, like I knew pretty much immediately what it was. Like I got a unofficial diagnosis from physical therapist that was on that was on course because um, there's some pretty reliable manual test you can do to see if your ACL is gone. <laughs> um, and it was pretty clear that my ACL was gone. So, so I like, I, I kind of knew right away. And then that was confirmed that that next morning by the radiology report, because I was able to get an MRI that day. And then, um, yeah, from there it was, you know, very easy to just focus on like first focus on the race that day, like, you know, just cheering everyone on and, and trying to to enjoy the experience of being back in the OCR community, which was honestly very helpful. Like when you have when you have other things to to focus on outside of yourself, um, it's it's great to take off that that stress of the injury. So um, yeah, and then from there was able to just immediately get in to see surgeons, get different opinions, um, and kind of focus on that. And then I do think that the when i really realized like the timeline of everything um i got definitely got a little upset <laughs> just because it was kind of settling in that like uh that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be back for the rest of the season right like um and i've kind of avoided saying that explicitly but but that's the reality like i i won't even try to be back at the world championships this year like that's just it's not a timeline that is reasonable um, to come back in in a safe way. 
So, so and really, even, and even, even earlier this week or last week, I think you said to me, that was like, oh, there's an outside chance. So now we're like officially like, okay, let's just admit this year is not. Yeah. I just, this is based on what, what, you know, three different surgeons have told me that I should, I should expect nine months, like nine months is a good goal to get back into full competition, fully, you know, not being worried about my knee. Um, that's like, like at, at least nine months is what they say. So, and I, and I do expect, like, I have everything on my side. Um, maybe besides like, I'm not, you know, 18 or something, but beyond that, <laughs> um, young enough that I'll recover well. And I'm going into this literally the most fit in, of my life. <laughs> so, um, and that's, that's really good. So going into it really fit, really like, you know, I have good muscular tone and everything. Um, and then also I, I'll be able to devote plenty of time to, to rehab, to cross training. I ha I'll have, I'll have the best surgeon, um, or one of the best surgeons in the country and I'll have a great rehab team. So do you already have a date for surgery? Um, yes, pretty much. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm, is it a secret? Is it no, at a top secret a, facility? <laughs> no, it's not a secret. <laughs> I'm just, I have to, I have to decide today on um, where and um, who I'm going to go with for surgery. But I, I believe that's going to be on June 7th. So okay. A little over a week from now. Um, and the reason to, to wait a little bit longer is to let my swelling go down and to, um, to get back full range of motion. So, so ideal circumstance is that I walk into surgery like with a normal gait and have like full range of motion. So what's, what, if you have a normal, it seems like you shouldn't have a normal gait with a torn ACL, should you? Um, so people live without ACLs. That's, that's the, like, Plenty of people <laughs> like don't have an ACL and they walk around just fine. Um, so yeah, so I could actually, like, I could just rehab and I could get to a point where I could even like, I could jog without my ACL. The problem is that if I want to do like more aggressive movements, including just running fast, I need an ACL. You will be able to join me in the broadcast booth maybe for a couple of races. Do we talk about that? Can yeah. we say that? Can we spoil yeah. that surprise? Yeah. I'm really excited about that. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you know how, um, do you know how a gimbal works? No, I'm joking. You won't have to do that part. Oh, to run with it. Yeah. The gimbal is the person that runs with you. By the way, I have to say, uh, that was an advantage to this race being so accessible is that we actually saw it. Like a lot of times you get injured somewhere out in the woods, even, mm -hmm. even poor Leon, they had just gone away from us into, into that little nook. And you even though it was like, not even that danger of a spot, we didn't see it, but cause at first, the rumor was you came down on the truss. Like, that was the rumor. It's like, oh, yeah. she landed on the truss. But then, obviously, when you came back, it was just, nope. It was just the way you – it was just the way you landed. Yeah. I think it, I think it was more or less just a freak accident thing. But it but it was interesting being able to walk into my appointments and be like, do you want to see what, what happened? Here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah. <laughs> How – but have you watched it like like – like uh like this is a pruder film like backwards and forwards and you know multiple I times did, no i mean <laughs> no it's not great to watch <laughs> um but i did i did like try to slow-mo it to see like to really kind of like analyze like what happened right. and it just looks like i like i grab the truss a little bit and i fall back um and i i mean I, yeah i think i just like i think my foot was just in kind of like a weird position and maybe it was like the angle that I was falling at. I don't know. There you have it. As I said, full interview up with Nicole uh, later on in the coming days. Uh, thanks as always for tuning in. If you appreciate this stuff, you can join the Patreon. That's right. The Patreon is a great way to contribute to this channel. You can give once for the whole year. Uh, you can allow it to take from your credit card monthly, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, links in the description below and also i'm sure you've heard josh and i talking about that discord for the last year and a half it also two years it also came up on the live stream as well we'll put that in the links below as well great weekend everybody love you miss you mean it uh, i gotta run